Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Holly Shields and you're watching Kaokang TV live from our Sydney studios. This is the last show of the day at the last trade. Today, the S&P ASX 200 closed up, gaining 51.90 points or 0.70% and setting a new 50-day high. The top performing stocks in this index were Poly Novo up 7.55% and Magellan Financial Group up as well a very similar 7.35%. Over the past five days, the index has gained 1.68%, but it's still virtually unchanged over the year-to-date period. And today, Australian telecom company Unity Group announced that it's received a revised indicative proposal from a consortium comprising of HRL, Morrison & Co. and Brookfield Infrastructure Group to acquire the company. And on the back of this news, Unity shares are up as much as 4% to $4.92 in the early trades, hitting a new high after rising more than 50% since initiating exclusive discussions with Morrison. But later, the price has plummeted by 1.38% and came down at 4.66. And shares of lithium boron supplier Ioneer soared over 6.48% today following an MOU announcement. Ioneer shares traded in the green at 0.58 a share, as investors are keeping the stock on their radar following the completion of a memorandum of understanding between INR's wholly owned subsidiary, INA USA Corp., and the Nevada based Nextech Batteries. Nextech is a global leader in the proprietary lithium sulfur battery tech company based in Carson City. Both businesses have reflected their mutual interest in acquiring the lithium carbonate and or lithium hydroxide supply from INR's Rhyolite Ridge Lithium Boron Project for Nextex production facility in Carson City to manufacture the next generation of solid-state batteries. And also in the news today, Australian fintech company Doe recently entered into a $20 million equity placement facility agreement with a U.S.-based investment firm called Long State Investments. That is according to the ASX filing. Joe will be diluting its pool of securities by about 5% in exchange for a flexible on-demand funding facility. Meanwhile, the company's shares were trading flat today at 0.034 cents apiece. And also today, Sigma Healthcare expects to return profit in fiscal year 23, despite having reported a net loss for the year ending January 31. The company believes that profitability could be achieved as disruption is expected to wane going ahead and the investments already made in world-class infrastructure would begin to be optimized. And as a result, Sigma shares were trading in the green zone today at 0.54 cents. The shares were up as well by 3.85 and Sigma also re reported, I should say, a 1.3% rise in revenue to 3.4 billion Australian dollars. Although the company's EBITDA did dip, however, 56.3% to just $30 million. And that is a wrap today on the last trade, but tune in next time only on Calcane TV. This is Holly Shield signing off.